Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, September 28th, 2017. Um, I received a couple of um, comments and feedback on the video that I did yesterday regar regarding the um, uh, moving average moving average envelopes as well as Bollinger Bands and some other uh, things to look at extremes uh, to help uh, identify price reversals. Uh, one of those was on the site, and I replied to that. Uh, the uh, member had asked, um, you know, I had he hadn't seen any mention of Bollinger Bands or the envelope channels before, which um, the Bollinger Bands, I don't keep on my charts uh, as I, uh, a lot of the indicators. If you notice, my reply was on the left of the charts, you'll see numerous tabs. These tabs actually go down, down below the screen. These are various indicators that I use uh, from time to time. I just click them. They're already pre-configured and I add these studies to my charts. And um, so my reply there was, I don't uh, keep all those up. It, it's not even possible that my charts would look like a Christmas tree with so many indicators. I'm a big believer of uh, the old KISS rule in trading, keep it simple, stupid. So I like to keep a few indicators on. But with that being said, I'm continually experimenting with new indicators. If somebody mentions one, I see somewhere else, some something else, or I read about one, I'll, I'll look at it and play around with it. And if it sticks, I incorporate it into my trading. Uh, however, I don't put those up on the charts. I don't mention them. In the case of Bollinger Bands, they only go up on my charts. As I said in that other video, I find Bollinger Bands, uh, no predictive value whatsoever, 90, probably 95. 9% of the time. The only time I see predictive value is when they pinch tightly. You can be on the lookout for a big move. Here's a big pinch here recently in NVIDIA. And, um, or when you get those extremes, like I covered in yesterday's video, where you have the candles that pop outside the bands, then you look for a trend reversal back in. So I uh, wanted to let you know that these are all things that when I'm studying the charts and, uh, you know, during the day and in the evening hours, uh, I look at these, I just don't put them up and I don't make mention. Um, no reason to throw out a thousand things as it is. My, my analysis gets wordy enough and pretty detailed enough. So that's with that being said, uh, I do from time to time mention these things and have many times over the years talked on Bollinger Bands and other things uh, that are on there. Uh, the, other, the other comment came out of my YouTube channel, and I want to say this for any YouTube followers. Um, I greatly appreciate the comments and the feedback. I know I get a lot of questions. I can't possibly answer them all. Um, I want to apologize in advance for that. My, my priorities go to the members of the site. Um, there's not enough hours in the day. If I was 110% on top of answering questions, comments, and providing you know, the best analysis that I can on the site, keeping up with all the trade ideas, sure, I would devote some time and try to get back to those questions. Uh, I want to let you know I see the comments. I see the feedback. Um, appreciate it. And uh, the question that, or the comment that I got today uh, that I saw on the YouTube channel was uh, regarding the Bollinger Bands, and I'll, I'll just read it out. Uh, AA and CENX have both had runs of eight consecutive days outside their Bollinger, Bollinger Bands, so the method is not reliable. And it goes on a little more about that, how stock charts tells you how to use it. Now, uh, everyone is going to use an indicator the way they want. Uh, there's several ways to skin a cat, and in my opinion, there's several ways to use indicators. So you can go to stock charts. I... I've always recommended that as probably one of the best sources, uh, without a doubt, probably the best free source out there for technical analysis. They have a great chart school. Um, I encourage everybody to go to that as probably a go-to you know, uh, resource for both beginners and uh, seasoned traders alike. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to address that, that uh, a couple points to that. And starting out here, we're going to look at NVIDIA. It's the first and only stock that I looked at for this example, and I'm doing that because it's the same one I used in the video uh, uh, the other day on the um, moving average envelopes in the Bollinger Band. So we'll look at that. And keep in mind that first and foremost, when using any indicator in technical analysis, I find it very, very important to look at that indicator and don't apply it in a vacuum. Look at it with each individual stock, sector, index that you're using and see how it's worked in the past. Because if you do have a security, for in this example, where you see tons of um, candles that shoot outside the Bollinger Bands and you don't see any predictive value, you can't look back for a few years and see that you know 80 plus percent of the time when you had those outside shoots like this, a candle outside that you had a reversal and a move back down to the bottom of the band, just as I mentioned yesterday. If you don't see that, then A, don't use that uh, trading strategy or don't factor that into your analysis on that security because it's just how that security trades. 
B, the other option is play around with the settings. That's why every con indicator out there just about has configurable settings. Uh, so you tweak the settings to find the settings that work with that security. And if they don't, don't force it, move on. There's a lot of indicators out there. So um, uh, that's, that's one point that I wanted to make to that. Now, on that line here, uh, let's go look at uh, NVIDIA and, and show you the history. As we go in here, I don't know how well you can see this chart, but... Uh, Okay, I've flipped over to a white chart. That might show a little better on the um, YouTube channel here. So what we're looking at, uh, let's just go through here and look for some pretty distinct moves outside the Bollinger Bands. We see one there. We see one there, and I'm going to get back to this one. I'm going to talk on that. Uh, so this one, you can see a big, big rally after that, a big reversal right away to the top of the band. That was a very big, don't forget, these are. this is a two-year chart on the video which has gone up like a rocket so the scaling in this chart is log scaling going from you know about 25 a share up to almost 200 a share that's a very big percentage price gain there don't underestimate it uh, just eyeballing this chart um, so you go on again you can see a little tag on the bottom of the channel this one didn't go very far out but it did come out a little bit there's a pierce outside above the channel clear pierce there and then a move all the way back down to the bottom here's a clear pierce outside I covered this one yesterday I covered all of these yesterday for the most part um, and you can see we went slightly lower but then we moved up to the top of the channel there and uh, there was a big pierce above the channel prices never went above that moved back down so you can see again as I illustrated yesterday a pretty a pretty um, reliable uh, track record at least on this stock here um, now a couple things I've noted too when you see the signals that didn't work they tend to be and I think in almost every instance a gap and this is part of technical analysis you really have to sit and study these charts and you know what stands out what's different um, so we had a gap back here and that candle I'll have to move this chart in so you can zoom in here you can see that candle went out Prices came back in, but they never went down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band. It came back in a little bit and then continued to rally. Now, so there's one instance where it didn't work. There's a couple other instances here, and this is a very powerful one. So we go forward in time. Uh, let's do this. There you go, right here. Uh, there's another candle outside the Bollinger Bands that didn't at all give you a reversal. Uh, we rallied from there. Now, what do those two have in common? They were gaps. They were big gaps. And, uh, and here's another one. Fast forward again. There's another gap up. And this isn't coincidence. These are earnings, more than likely. I didn't scrub this chart for that. But if I look at the time between the two, it's going to be about six months there. Yeah, there it is, 5.9 months. So that's that's earnings. Companies report every quarter. And I go back there, and uh, chances are that was an earnings-induced gap, as was that one, even though that one didn't pierce out. So what does this tell me? Now I have a filter. If if you're trading Nvidia and you're using this as a you know buy or sell signal, um, ignore gaps, ignore earnings induced gaps, whether they're to the upside. In this case, the trend has been up, so most of the gaps were up. Um, but ignore those signals. And more importantly, as I always say, this or anything in technical analysis is one of many buy or sell signals and you need to use them in conjunction with each other um, I always look at uh, a stock you know and, and, and consider this or I, I should say when trading I look at any one indicator as one of many tools to either confirm or refute any other buy signals or other analysis so again I do not use this nor would I recommend such a, a, a strategy of looking for moves outside the Bollinger Bands as a standalone buy and sell signal. I would use it in con conjunction with other analysis. Um, you know, this is like, I'll use an analogy, it's like a uh, carpenter. A carpenter has a toolbox. He shows up to your house to do a job, build a cabinet, whatever it is. He doesn't have just a hammer in that toolbox. Uh, he has a hammer, a screwdriver, wrench, drills, ver you know, various saws, etc. And he's going to use all those tools. Same thing in technical analysis. The more tools you can use, the better the job's going to turn out. Um, you know, there's a balance there. Like I said, keep it simple. Find a few indicators you know well. Stick with them experiment from time to time and if something really meshes with your trading style your analysis you can incorporate that in but uh, try not to use too many things at once I find it's like trying to hold water or sand in your hands uh, the signals are just going to slip right on out because there's too much uh, for the human brain to possibly possibly track at any one time okay we're going to flip back to the um, uh, black chart here 
because uh, I wanted to show you something on, on NVIDIA in those signals. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let me go over back to, well, let's, let's circle these failed signals here that I talked about. Uh, and like I said, those were on gaps. There's one that broke out uh, above the Bollinger Bands. Uh, here's another one that was on a, actually, yeah, that was on a small gap. I don't know if that was an earnings induced gap or not, but it was a relatively small gap. Let me clear out that signal. Um, okay, I circled the big gaps, and again, I haven't verified 100%. It's just my assumption that these are earnings from the looks of the gaps and the way they're spaced out, uh, probably earnings induced gaps. So those are a few instances where you had the um, candles that shot outside of the bands and you didn't see a reversal back down to the bottom of the bands uh, before prices exceeded the, you know, the upper limits of those gaps or those candles. Uh, so a few failed signals. Now, if you're trading in a vacuum, then you would say, okay, well, you still, this was still a profitable strategy as I went over the other day. I won't do it here. Again, you can look at the video the other day, go over all these other uh, shoots outside of the uh, Bollinger Bands and look at the price action. And again, you still, in, in a vacuum, just using that, have a winning strategy, at least on this stock. And again, if it doesn't work on another stock you're looking at, if the history is too sporadic, then then disregard that uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, or modify them. Okay, now this is where I need you to bear with me. This chart gets a little bit busy. And as I was talking about earlier, I don't like too many things on a chart. You kind of lose a lot of stuff, but I'll, I'll explain this real quick. I may have added one here. I had to flip to another board, uh, but here's those those breakaway or those big gaps uh, that, that shot outside the bands, but then prices didn't reverse. And the point I want to mention on this chart is I look back at those uh, times and the other analogy that I want to make is uh, when trading, as I said earlier, I don't use any one single uh, technical event, not just a break of support, not just a bullish or bearish divergences, not just a you know break above the um, you know Bollinger Bands in this example, but a lot like in a in a, a, a criminal proceeding proceedings or a court of law, you have. At least in civil courts, they call it a preponderance of evidence that you need to have for a judge to convict somebody. Whereas in um, in criminal cases, they call it you have to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. Now in trading, you can't really get beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. So let's just use that term preponderance of evidence. If I'm going to take a trade, long or short, I want a preponderance of evidence that the stock is going to go up or down. Doesn't mean I'm going to get it right, but the more factors I can line up in my favor the higher the probability of that trade. You know, I'll liken this to, you know, if I, you know, someone's being charged on a homicide charge, for, you know, going into a 7-Eleven gas station and shooting somebody. Um, but the courts, they don't, they don't have a motive. They can't put that, that uh, the, um, the accused there at the scene of the crime. Um, there's no word of weapon. Uh, the only thing they have is a witness that says, yeah, I, I saw this guy go in there and shoot them. I think it looked like him. They're not going to get convicted. Same thing with a trade. You don't just short a stock because of one single thing. The more factors you can line up, the better chance you have of having that trade play out. Just like uh, if, an, you know, if a prosecutor can can make an overwhelming case against a defendant, that defendant's probably going to get convicted. Uh, so that's that's what you look at for trading. So when we go back into these, uh, bear with me, I have a point here. When you look at these times, these points and times, all I see on those gaps are breakouts. I don't see bearish chart patterns heading into there. This was just the beginning of a wedge, the beginning of divergence. That divergence didn't exist back here. There was a rising wedge. There was a breakdown. There was a technical short entry. Um, but along the way, I just see breakouts is what I see when these gaps happen. These were breakaway gaps. And uh, here's a downtrend line you can see there right after a 21% correction and a double or triple bottom in the stock right here. If you zoom in, uh, there was a looks like a uh, descending triangle pattern. We broke out above there. So again, these signals failed because you didn't have any other. I don't see at least looking at this chart any other confirming evidence to go short the stock at that point in time. Uh, now, let's look at this most recent uh, entry here because NVIDIA is a short trade on the site. 
I pointed this out in advance when the video was up here um, a couple a week or two ago. I pointed out in the trading room that there was a potential for an island cluster top before it even happened because I saw this breakaway gap. I knew we're at the end of, of a very extended run. You don't look for island cluster or island topping patterns you know, after a 10, 20% run, they are topping patterns. They are trend reversal patterns, not just short-term sell signals. So you're looking for a potential major top. And so far, so good. We gap down below there. There's a candle that gap down that left the island cluster. Um, you also have this uptrend line, this bearish rising wedge, which we broke below. And now we're back testing from below. So there's one sell signal. And in my, from my experience, a very high probability sell signal. These are some of my favorite sell signals, island cluster tops. I love island cluster bottoms for longs, the, the reversal um, patterns on the on the bullish side. But this is a bearish reversal pattern. So uh, quite a bit of evidence. And that also jives with, if you look closely, uh, again, this chart's busy. I'll go back to the other board here. Let's just look at this chart. And there you can see it. And that happens to follow this sell signal right here with this move, a very clear move. In fact, I don't think we've seen a candle so far outside the Bollinger Bands. Uh, we had this one here and then we gapped up again and we're f we traded two days completely outside of the bands, not even touching on the pullbacks. Uh, so there it is. My point being that you have that sell signal. It came at a time uh, that we had right around in close proximity to other sell signals. So, hey, this trade's either going to work out or it's not. I'm not going to get married to it. The stops are there. Uh, the price targets are there. It's it's very objective, and that's all we can do. We take these objective trade entries. And as I said, the more factors that you can line up. Um, in fact, at times, what I try to do is talk myself out of a trade. If I see a trade set up, look at the charts. Um, I try my best not to become subject to confirmation bias. You know, that means seeing what you want to see and ignoring all the other facts. But uh, with that being said, if I can make a mixed case to be long or short a stock, step aside. Uh, trading's tough enough as it is. And if you're not being very picky and selective on your trades, uh, you're just going to grind your wheels, in my opinion. All right, we'll leave it there. Hopefully, um, there's some beneficial takeaways. And again, thank you to all for the feedback, whether it's via the site or the YouTube channel. Uh, not only does this spur conversation that hopefully helps others, it helps me. Sometimes when I get these questions or something put to me, it makes me dig up something that I've used in the past and might have missed, not been using at the time. And, and even just talking and going through this stuff just helps to... Uh, you know, uh, keep it alive. So again, thanks to all. All right. This has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart. Hope you enjoyed it.